Dino Hamilton there with I believe and if you believe that it's going to be a fantastic week starting today you, you're on the right path with us. So Dana Hamilton, I'm sure you also know, has been, has been nominated as the Gospel Artist of the Year. Also, a Gospel Song Munio in the upcoming VGM. She's in the same league with uh, Joe Metal, uh, Koda, and, and a few others there. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but right now, let's talk about education. It's important that we do this conversation is made possible by a mission uh, project in partnership with star ghana danida uk and the european union we're talking about the whole conversation from governments and that says that well we are not privatizing public schools well the ghana national education campaign coalition insists that well in spite of the flat denial by government there's still some privatization going on i've been joined this morning by the executive chairman of the uh, of nec uh, mr kofi asari kofi welcome thank you very much good to have you here yeah nice nice to be here and why I'm are you insisting in spite of government's denial or dismissal of your claim that they are privatizing public schools why are you still insisting they said look what you're saying is not correct and you're still insisting why I think um, what we are saying and what government is saying is the same thing. It's just a matter of nomenclature. Okay. Government is saying that it sees the seeding of the management functions mm. in basic schools to a non-state actor okay. to manage for, obviously, a consideration, mm. not to be a privatization, but rather a public private partnership okay but we know that PPPs mm -hmm. are a type of privatization if you Google PPPs mm. you realize that there are several types of privatization and the most common in natural fact in Africa is PPP mm. and so currently we have privatized ECG okay. right right no one is disputing that mm. but what has happened there what has happened at ECG is simply that we have privatize the management of ECG, mm. outsource it to a non-state actor okay. to provide the management service mm. and get paid by mm. government. What is happening at ECG? What happened at Aquavitans in some time past? It's not different from what we are discussing. That, that means says you are creating a certain impression which is not correct, which is, it tends to make it look cumbersome and difficult and scary, and that you should stop. It shouldn't be scary at all. Um, we are discussing public policy options. Okay, there's nothing bad about trying to experiment a model. We are not saying that government is, is privatizing the school. Okay, because if you privatize the school, then it means that you may have probably given the school to um, surrender the school totally to okay. someone who might end up charging fees. That is not what government is doing. Okay. Government is not saying that someone should pay fees mm. to enroll in a basic school. No. They call it partnership. Government is calling it a partnership. And in that partnership, what government seeks to achieve is that government believes that the key issues in basic education in Ghana mm. has to do with management okay. and supervision. Mm. And so government believes that the private sector mm. has a lot of experience when it comes to managing schools okay. for quality outcomes. Oh, what's wrong with that? And so it wants to tap into that experience. Oh, what's wrong with that? What is wrong with the approach is that, number one, when it comes to experience in managing schools, the mission schools have one of the best experiences. Mm. The Catholic Church, the Presby Church. Mm. The Anglican no, Church. Yeah, we know most of the best schools in Ghana are mission schools. Right. The churches didn't come and just manage the school. They built the schools themselves. Right. So there are several models when it comes to trying to experiment what works in schools that do, that do not belong to government, especially mm. the faith-based schools. What mm. we are saying is that if it's a matter of trying to document the best practices in managing public schools, there is a compendium of information in that respect mm. from the side of the mission schools because so far as we are concerned, mm. they are the best managers of our educational system. Okay. And that is not disputable. Mm. Now, when you go and government is saying no, I am going for non-profit, mm. non-profit, mm. but non-state actors, non-profits. Okay. Now, if you go to Liberia, Liberia brought in non-profits 
Rising academies, they are non-profits. Okay. Bridge International Academies, they are all non-profits. Mm. Liberia, Sierra Leone, Kenya, Uganda, about about seventeen countries, mm. with the support of the World Bank, they brought in all these these guys as non-profits right. to provide the same service that we are discussing here. Mm. All we are telling government is that government, our experience in seventeen countries in the world, okay. and currently in Pakistan, is that these non-profits. They come in as non-profits to manage your school for you right. for a particular consideration. Okay. But how do you have realized that, one, that model of bringing in non-state actors that you call non-profit is mm -hmm. not sustainable because the cost is high. The cost of maintaining that arrangement is not sustainable. And that if government has any other resources mm -hmm. that it wishes to invest in education, mm -hmm. why won't you rather invest that money to strengthen the management and supervision of the current system. You, you sit on the Inter-Ministerial Advisory Board. Uh, have you told them this at the meeting? The issue hasn't been discussed extensively have you, at the Ministerial Advisory Board. Have you given them this proposal? We have, we have had discussions with government when we went to Aqua Safari to discuss the implementation arrangement okay. and then all, if you like, the framework for this Ghana Partnership School okay. project. Okay, we were invited to the table okay. and we had discussions around mm. it. Okay, and so um, it is not as if we are not discussing with government. Have you given them this proposal they are talking about based on your experience? Everything I'm 17, telling you, 17 uh, countries, everything I'm telling them. you yeah. has been sent to government already. So there's a document to that effect, of course. We've indicated to them they are about the challenges that Liberia, Sierra Leone faced with the rising mm -hmm. academies and then also British, British International and the challenges Uganda is, Uganda is facing currently okay. with British International okay. and all the other African countries that in the past six, seven, eight years mm -hmm. experimented this model of using non-profits okay. to come and manage So what have they been saying to the document you sent to them? Government has not responded to the content of our engagement. Okay. They have not responded to the issue we are raising. Mm. All they are saying is that we are not privatizing. We are not privatizing. And we keep... Was that why you went to do a press conference instead of rewriting to them to say, this is what we this is what we know, this is what our experience is, and this is the way we think it should go? Well, the press conference, as a matter of fact, was a strategy, uh, a two-pronged strategy. The first one was that there was some seeming misinformation okay. from the side of the ministry to the effect that our members, the net members, who will, who will be benefiting from the Ghana Partnership mm -hmm. Schools Project mm -hmm. by managing some of the schools, which was, which was, I mean, which was an untruth. And so we wanted the whole world to know that we are against PPPs in education mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing we would do is to, is to um, subscribe to you know, this, this particular partnership. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it wasn't true that our members were, were, were being considered as part of the uh, people to manage schools. Okay. In any case, we live in this country. Mm -hmm. How many, how, how many NGOs, government is now saying that it's not, it's not going to use private schools, okay. but they're not going to use, they're not going to use private companies, mm -hmm. but they're not going to mm -hmm. use non-profits. We live in this country. Mm -hmm. What is the history of non-profit management of basic schools in Ghana? If we have to discuss the best practices, the okay. models, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. of replication, mm -hmm. when it comes to managing schools and getting quality learning outcomes, where do non-profits come in? I mean, let's be honest for ourselves. Mm -hmm. The best schools in Ghana, which of them belong to non-profits? The best schools mm -hmm. in Ghana belong to private companies and then the missions. We know that. And so, so far as I'm concerned, if you are looking for best practices in managing schools that bring results, you don't have to go to non-profits. Mm. You have to go to either the mission schools or the private sector. But we have said that in engaging the private sector, okay. there are so many approaches. Number one, let me give you an example. Give me. Have you seen the mission schools? A school like Presec. Right. It was built by the Presbyterian Church. Mm. And government went and assisted. Call right. it government. Assisted. As government second, as, second as, exactly. Mm. So... What, that, is, that is a form of PPP, if you want to, if you want to look at it that mm -hmm. way. It is, a, it, it is government annexing a private school and supporting it and government owning it. Listen very Because well. government has seen the need for it. Exactly. And exactly. The, and the potential that it has, the perspectives Good. and everything. So government has seen potential in the school. Okay. Okay. And government is saying, I want to assist you. So I am annexing the school. I will pay the salaries of your teachers, run the school, but then you use your, I mean, there's a partnership. Okay. Those are the partnerships we should encourage. In that partnership I just talked I just talked about, government is rather partnering a private government is rather partnering 
an existing school okay. owned by a mission. mission. Mm. If government wants to go and partner and own an existing private school mm. with the benefit, with the intention of trying to get the best practices from that school, no one will have a problem. But this is the opposite. That the private actors rather mm. are coming to manage government schools for them. Mm. And we are saying that in immediately this, this will disadvantage your members. The disadvantage is that when wh wh who goes to embark on any economic venture with the intention of not to make profit, government will pay them based on learning outcomes. Government will say, for instance, mm. there will be a standardized test. Okay, that for example, if in, in class two, okay. at the end of term one, every child is supposed is able to recite a ten-letter word. Okay, then you are able to get X amount of money. Mm. If only half of the class are able to recite the letter words, mm. then you get half of your money. How different is that from, say, government pushing and get fund into a Presec, uh, a hot cast, and a crack academy, uh, and a Desadel college? How different is that? The, the government providing science resource centers, buses, and everything else. It's still the same government that's providing. The Presec is own, it was, it's owned by a mission. The Presec was there before government went in. Government did not build the Presec. Mm. So the other partner has brought in significant investment. Okay. They built the school. Mm. You understand? They built the school. Mm. That is how they, they built the school, not mm. government. Mm. So look at it from a different perspective. In this discussion, government owns the school. Okay. And we are bringing in these guys to come and manage the school for us because we think that they are better managers. Is it, is it not because over time, even though we have a certain structure, there's a headmaster, there's a circuit supervisor, there's a district supervisor and all of that, and yet you have most of these schools have challenges in terms of the quality of education, in terms of supervision, yeah. uh, in terms of even the grades that they make at yeah. the end of the, their tenure in school and all those ones. Government believe that, look, if their counterparts, like the seven great princes and St. Nicholas and everybody else, they are making, they are making it, yeah. why not draw from their expertise and make our children better? You can be disadvantaged because you chose to go to a public school. Exactly. Exactly. But listen very well. Listen very well. There are about 5.5 million children in public schools. Mm. And the learning outcomes there is not good. And so we agree that there's a, there's a need to enhance the learning outcomes. And one way is to ensure that there is proper management and supervision. Right. But listen, listen. The point we are making is that we, you, have, you have not resourced public schools. You have not resourced the circuit supervisor enough mm. to be able to monitor schools. A circuit supervisor is supposed to monitor 15 schools averagely, between 10 and 15 schools. Right. Okay. True. Visit them at least two times in a month. Mm. That circuit supervisor may not even have a motorbike. In a typical rural area, mm. how mobile are circuit supervisors in terms of the location of schools? Mm. Very critical. That, that's, no. that's, that's one side of the argument. The other side of the argument is circuit supervisors who live in Accra, who do not move at all, even in respect to the fact that they have all these things. And I've, I, I do a lot of community work. You go to certain schools, you see heaps of refuse. There's a headmaster there. There's a teacher on duty. There's a second supervisor who comes around. The children don't even have toilets to, to, to take yeah. care of themselves. Yeah. And there's a second supervisor who draws a salary every month. Yeah. That clearly is not a problem of resources. It's a problem of lack of supervision and negligence of duty. Do you agree? I am not saying that immediately you provide facilities for the second supervisor. So it becomes efficient. Mm. I mean, um, excellent. I'm not saying that. And I agree that even in the midst of resources, there may be some lapses in right. management of resources. But the point I'm making is that the inequality in terms of quality in our basic education mm. system is mainly a rural urban divide issue. Rural because rural schools perform poorer and urban schools public perform better. Okay? A so, assumption. No, not assumption. Assumption. No. I, I went to a proper public school. Proper what we call in a, in a rural area here in Accra. Okay, many years ago, we used to make 10 ones, 12 ones, 08, and all the best grades. I have made to our medical doctors yeah. and all of that. Today, in those same schools, the, the highest they make at the BEC could be 18, aggregate 18. That's alarming. That's what that now, now you find that our parents who attended those same public schools because at the time you didn't have private schools really or you had just a small number of it, could speak impeccable English, have risen through the ranks to become what they are, and those who are coming who are in public schools really have nothing to aspire to, sadly. 
Okay, so, so this is where government says. Yes, so you are, you, you, you are feeding it into our concept that this is where the quality says. of management has worsened. Well, this, That's why this in, is where in, government in says. Time, it was better. So let's bring private people in there to manage it because okay. once we bring it there, they will manage it. Let better. me ask you a question if we bring a private partner to I, manage, I don't answer questions by the way, anyway, hypothetically, <laughs> okay, hypothetically, if we bring a private partner to manage a school, particular school, and then the cost of and then we have to pay the private partner X which is 50% more than we're paying regular schools, okay? So you've incurred a 50% extra expenditure. Mm -hmm. And then the model works because we know it will work, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we are going to give the private, pa the private uh, manager more power than the headmaster has. Mm -hmm. The private partner is going to have the right to cause teachers to be transferred if, they, if, if he thinks that they are not working well. Mm -hmm. The headmaster barely has that power. Mm -hmm. he, the private partner is going to come with a board Mm -hmm. Listen very well mm -hmm. to manage the school mm -hmm. and invite one or two members of the SMT to join. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so the person is controlling management. Headmaster hasn't got the power. Mm -hmm. Okay, the headmaster uh, can make recommendations. Well, only recommendations. Yes, and recommendations then, to, then, the, to the district office. It, Did it, they it, make those recommendations? Let's be honest. With, let's, let's be honest. Let, let's be mm -hmm. honest to ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, it will take up to a year okay. for headmaster to get someone transferred. That's but do, that, do that's if, if the person will ever be transferred. Do they make those recommendations? Of course, they make them, but they don't go anywhere. We know it. And the private man is being given the power mm. because it's a private person, they have some resources so they can pre finance certain mm. aspects of the of the process. As we speak now in the public system, we are in second term. Okay. Capitation grant hasn't gone. Mm. That money is the money used in managing the school. Mm. First term ended, it wasn't there. Second term, it's not there. Mm. Last term, according to NAT, most people in rural areas wrote their exam on um, wrote, wrote their exam on blackboards. Mm. I mean there, there were no exam papers. They had to use a blackboard to do right. the exam. Okay, now if you deny schools of these resources, okay, especially the grant which is used to manage the school, okay, and then you tell them and tell me that mm. you are, um, if you bring a non state actor and not for profit PPP, they will come and manage the schools better mm. because in that regime there won't be delays mm. because those guys will pay finance. Right. Do you think that's the best way to go? Let's be honest to ourselves. Mm. All we are saying is that, all we are saying is that if the model works after pilots, mm. you cannot replicate it in all schools it is not possible okay government <laughs> says apologize uh show evidence to substantiate your claims that it's trying to privatize public schools or apologize would you do that well i have indicated time with that number mm -hmm. that ppps are a typology okay. of privatization mm -hmm. government thinks that the context within which we use the word privatization um, was not in rec recourse to the Ghanaian understanding mm. of privatization. And that very few people will think that they're okay. actually just ceding the management to an external actor. Okay. And people will think that mm. government is selling public schools and mm. then government is going to start charging fees. So we told the, the ministry okay. when we met last week that that is not our intention. Mm. Okay? Would you apologize? We, we are saying, and I'm saying here, mm. that government is not selling any, any public school. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Government is not selling any public school to a private person. Neither is government asking anyone to pay fees at the basic level. Mm -hmm. Ghana is still having a free compulsory universal basic education policy where students don't pay fees. Okay? But what government intends to do mm. is to outsource the management of basic schools to non-state actors. Okay. It is called public private partnership. Will you apologize? We are, there is nothing to apologize for. Okay. Me. Thank you. Kofi Asari, thank you very much for Thank time. He is the executive chairman of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition and he has been talking to us about the uh, intention of government to, as he calls it, uh, partner uh, non-profits in a certain PPP arrangement for public schools. But let me say a happy birthday, a very special one to you. Mr. Mauko Fajinu is executive head of marketing at Stamp Big Bank. It's a uh, belated happy birthday to you from all of us here at TV3. We love you, Mauko, and we wish you all the best. Also to you, Joseph Abalo and Robert Kla. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday. We'll see you after the break with some more here on New Day.